this really is about sharing stories. It's about being sincere and genuine and then people can start to really understand the culture as well as the stories that come with this simple kuei. We can be proud of what we do, of our history. This is the kuei and this is us. With the older generation, for Gui, a lot of it is a nostalgic value for them because it's some things that they used to have when they were young. And they will actually come and tell me stories of how in their kampong days, it's the men with the, the baskets on their head, selling to Maya. Memory plays a big part. Gui comes in many shapes and forms. Steamed, fried, baked, layered, the list goes on. It is one part of our culture that all Singaporeans can identify with regardless of our racial backgrounds. But what is it about Gui that makes it so special? I'll be speaking to four different kuih makers to learn about their craft and eat my way through the process. When people talk about kuih, most of the people will have this preconception that it's those popular Teochew ones. Kuih is actually a lot more wide-ranging. Today, we're going to make ke jia luo po wan, also known as Hakka radish ball. Not many places sell it. It's something only most Hakka family makes at home. Traditionally, Hakka food is fatty, heavily seasoned. For Hakka kueh, a lot are savoury. It's very niche. So it's made mainly of radish, but flavoured with sauteed minced pork, cuttlefish, dried shrimp, mushrooms, all very usual kind of Hakka seasoning. Kueko tree is eaten during Easter time, when we keep vigil with the Lord as we pass by our friend's house, we can stop by to have a cup of tea and they are supposed to serve this cake to us. For me, we used to have these kueh during lunchtime and I just want to upkeep that tradition because there will be kueh eventually that you will not get to try. My mom and my auntie, they will reminisce about kueh that my grandma used to make and those are kueh that we can't find in the shops. It's good because then at least there's somebody to follow through and keep up our legacy and culture alive. Putumayams and appams have become kueh to Singaporeans. So that's the very unique thing about Singapore. Putumayam and appams are not eaten with red sugar and coconut anywhere else in the world. It's the way we have it that has made it a kueh here. So when I first started, if you're asking me if it's easy, that's what I thought. I would say it's very difficult because since there's only three ingredients, it's just rice flour, salt, water. For the appam, it's coconut milk as a fermenting agent. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. The margin of error for you is so minute. A bit off and the colour will change, a bit off, the texture will change. Kuih Salat is introduced to me through family because I come from a Puranakan uh, family as well. Whenever I go to a kuih shop or so, it's the first thing that I look for as well. The kuih Salat always seems very simple. It's just glutinous rice and a coconut custard. But actually, you need to even choose the rice well. Where it's sourced and how you prepare it affects the taste and the texture then to the coconut milk and then pandan leaves. So all these little steps, making sure it comes out nice and smooth and then finally to our mouths. I think that's what the essence of making kuih is. It's really taking time, putting a lot of love, attention to detail each step of the way. I try to be a little bit different. I try to use uh, traditional technique to come up with an original kuih. And I hope more people can do that. I use purple potato to make a skin so that it's bright and pretty and it was well received. That's how you keep the kueh industry vibrant and interesting and relevant. So there is no best way to, to straddle between being too traditional or being too modern. This is a constant journey of discovering and then just tweaking. That's how you slowly kind of find that balance. You can tweak it slightly but don't lose it. If you're able to do that, then you establish a connection. It was interesting to see how kueh making is evolving with young chefs taking on the mantle. But it shouldn't stop there. From recreating our favourites to introducing them at a dinner table, furthering kueh culture starts from home. And hopefully, we'll be able to taste these treats for generations to come.